All right, I did a quick little audio test, turned down some the game music volume in, you know, in the game. Didn't really adjust any, well, I guess I adjusted like menu volume and stuff, but here's what we got. I think I am more than audible over, uh, over the music, unless it crescendos. But welcome to whatever the hell I'm doing in Baldur's Gate 3. This is my first ever Baldur's Gate. Um, the, like, opening menu screen shows a giant archway made of stone with a big skull above the doorway. Uh, there's, like, a glowing, uh, coming from through the archway as if lava, fire. There are four people who walked down some stairs from that kind of fiery area, and they're looking over, like, a wasteland of... I would say there are, there are some spikes. It's very dark. I, there are actually some bodies hanging upside down by their feet from poles, too, so... Bad area, but... Let's see what we can get into here. Balanced adventure full of challenging choices. Tactician. You know... I'm gonna go with your balance to start with, because I'd really I played a lot of D and D by now, but I don't know how it's gonna translate to the game. So we'll see. And I can always go honor later. Adventuring alone is a hard road. Gathering a balanced party makes everything easier, from conversation to combat. We have a full motion video. We see a an. They're the squid-headed monsters. They're like humanoid. Uh, they're a lot of worshippers. We are in a, a circular room with like a weird pod in the middle. Kind of almost spherical, but like a flattened sphere. There's a... Oh. He can float. What are they freaking called? Um, well, there's an orc a lot against the wall. An orc female who's been unwrapped from some tendrils. Mind Flayer, that's what they're called. Um, the Mind Flayer's gone to the center, opens its palm, and that opens up like this. Okay, it's probably a seed pod, there we go, in the middle of this circular room. And there's what looked like little semen, little shrimp, little um, parasites, actually, that. It kind of seems like he's about to put one inside this orc lady, probably through the ear, or nose, or mouth. Hopefully not eye socket. Please don't be eye socket, that's gross. It is the eye socket, of course. It lashes and slides along one of her eyeballs into her brain. He picks out another gross leech thing from the pod. And starts to come at you. At, well, at who I think we are. Puts the leech thing against our eye. We see a very good close-up of the multiple rows of teeth of this little bugger. And then it latches onto us and... Inside. Who are you? I'm gonna keep tutorials on. My dad said he played this and there were no tutorials. I don't know... This part is going to take the longest, I guarantee it, because character creation always takes me a long time. I don't really want to... Yeah, I want to do custom. So, let's see. I'll probably be male. But I'm not sure yet. We'll see. So, you got your elves. They're... You know, pointy ears, live a very, very, very long time. Tiefling kind of our um, offspring of, de like, some something from devils from the Nine Hells and maybe a human. Drow or dark elves. Human. Pretty pretty standard. Githyanki, uh, I think are from the newer expansion. And they're kind of... They look a little bit orc-like, but still with uh, human coloring, or even elf coloring. Like they could, like, it could be an elf. Let's see what it says. 
their ruthlessness born from mind flayer enslavement get yankee ride the astral sea okay so yeah from the new atop red dragons bringing their silver swords and psionic might to bear against any trace of the illithid menace Drow said that, driven to the Underdark, most Drow have adopted a ruthless pragmatism, while the loath sworn delight in the uh, good, uh, goddess's evil tenants, the Seldarin, reject her attempt to overthrow the leader of the Elven Pantheon. So, not all Drow are bad. Humans, the most common face in Faerun. Uh, humans are known for their tenacity, creativity, and endless capacity for growth. Um, for the heck of it, elf. Um, with ethereal countenances and long lifespans, elves are at home with nature's power, flourishing in light and dark alike. Tiefling descendants from uh, Devils of the Nine Hells, they face constant suspicion in Faerun. Thankfully, their arcane abilities make them natural survivors. Dwarf. As durable and unyielding as their homes of stone, dwarves are some of the finest warriors, miners, and smiths of Faerun. They kind of look like shorter, stouter humans if you've never seen a dwarf before. Half-elf would be the, the mating of an elf and a human, the, the offspring of that. Curious, ambitious, and versatile, half-elves are welcome everywhere, but struggle within a community, uh, struggle without a community to call their own. Halfling, small yet capable, halflings prefer the comforts of home and hearth, but their natural luck and dexterity makes them fine adventurers. Gnome, small, clever, and energetic, gnomes are use their long lives to explore Faerun's brightest corners and darkest depths. Dragonborn. A proud race that values clan and skills above all else. Once enslaved by dragons, they strive to be self-sufficient, not wanting to be beholden to anyone, not even the gods. And half-orc. Creatures of intense emotion, half-orcs are more inclined to act than contemplate whether the, ra whether, whether the rage burning their bodies compels them to fight, or the love filling their parts, hearts inspires acts of incredible kindness. You got... So the races do not determine your stats. For the most part, it would seem. We're going to get to that a little bit later here. <laughs> they do determine what your features are. Your base movement speed. So, for instance, elves have a base of 30. I'm pretty sure dwarves have 25. Yep, just like in D&D. As do gnomes. And halflings. I think none of these are going to have a, a base of 35. Yes, 30 is going to be the highest for now. Um, what does this stuff mean? Get Yonki get a plus one to their initiative roll, so like they can, they're more likely to act first. Oh no, that's that's fighter. So that's the fighter stuff. Okay, that makes sense why it's over there now. But elves, let's see. Proficiency with long sword, short sword, short sword, short sword, and, sh and longbow. You can see in the dark up to 40 feet have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic can't put you to sleep. They seem to have uh, done away with maybe resting in this game, because usually they have the trance ability. Tieflings can see in the dark 40 feet. Resistance to fire damage, taking only half from it. Drow get a free cantrip dancing lights, apparently, so they can kind of create lights in a 30 foot radius area. Uh, well, within 60 feet of them, the light illuminates 30 feet uh, radius and lasts for a minute. It's concentration and charisma is their saving th or their casting ability. Not that it usually matters for that spell. Um, proficiency with rapier, short sword, and hand crossbow. Dark vision for eighty. Superior dark vision, cool. Yeah. And saving throws against charmed can't put can't put it to sleep by magic. Civil militia, human um, spears, pikes, halberds, glaives. Armor proficiency with light armor and shields. Pretty much no matter what race you uh, I'm class you pick, so that's nice. Human versatility, you get an, an additional skill to be proficient in, and your carrying capacity is increased by a quarter. Get the Yankee. I'm not very familiar with these guys at all, because I haven't played any Astral Sea stuff. Gain proficiency in all, in all skills of a chosen ability until long rest. So every long rest, they can choose... All skills of a... Oh, I see. So, if they choose Dex for that day, they'll have Acrobatics... Um, Sleight of hand, stealth, proficiency. They automatically get a mage hand, a psionic mage hand. It's invisible, so that's cool. Lasts for a minute. 60 foot range is pretty good. I think that's better than the 30 foot for normal mage hand, but I can't remember. And armor proficiency with light and medium armor, proficiency with short sword, long sword, great sword. 
dwarves do suffer that 25 feet movement speed, but proficiency with battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and war hammer. You can see in the dark 40 feet. Advantage on saving throws against poison, resistance to poison. So nothing really to make up for it unless you're fighting a lot of poison in a certain... Wait, what's all this stuff? Hold on. Why does that one have... Where'd that... Where'd the... Where'd the half-elf fighter get Firebolt from? What the fuck am I missing here? Um, yeah, so, half-elf. Uh, spears, pikes, halberds, glaives, light armor, and shields. Dark vision, 40 feet. Uh, saving throws against charm, can put to sleep by magic. Halfling. When you, when you roll a 1 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. Why wouldn't you want to? Um, you have an advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Is that stout? Oh, brave. Okay. Gnome only has advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, which is pretty good because that's against basic, a lot of magic. Not all of it because you'll have a lot of dex saves for evocation kind of magic and um, con saves for some like poison based magics and. That's the only feature they have. And 25 feet of movement speed. Dragonborn. Nothing. They do have a breath weapon, but I'm not... So acid breath is probably based on what type of dragonborn I choose, but I haven't got to that screen yet. Um, half orc is the last one. Dark vision 40. If you reach zero hit points, you regain one hit point instead of being coming downed. Or, um, that's not the right word. It's the word they're using in this game, but, um, unconscious. There we go. And when you land a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, you deal an extra d dice of weapon damage. So, pretty good for, like, frontliners. <laughs> pretty darn good indeed. Halfling gives you a 5% chance of, well... Yeah, I guess it. I guess it gives you a. Yeah, anyway, whatever. The math is interesting on that one. So, what do I want to be? Let's go through the. Let's go through the classes too, actually. Barbarians, strong embrace. Uh, the strong embrace the wild that hides inside. Keen instincts, prim primal physicality, and most of all, an unbridled, unquenchable rage. They will come with rage. Um, you deal two extra di damage with melee and imp improvised weapons and throwing. That can't be right. And it goes away. I can't even click the rest of it. It ends early, blah, blah, blah. If you can't do that, can't can't concentrate on spells. Or you can't cast or... You can concentrate on spells while we're... Oh, whatever. Maybe I'm wrong there. I know you can't cast them, but... And when you're not wearing armor, you add your constitution modifier to your armor class. Uh, wearing heavy armor impedes your rage as well. So... You can wear up to, like, medium armor. I think it's, uh, like, breastplate would be a medium armor you can wear. I think. I don't know what's, um, oh, I'm sure. But you generally don't want to. Um, okay. Bard has plus two to initiative for some reason. Barbarian had plus one. Oh! They pick your stats for you. Or do I get to roll? Oh, there is an ability. Okay, yeah, I can pick them if I want to. Okay, interesting. Okay, Bard, you know music is more than a fancy. It, it is a power. It is power. Through study and adventure, you have mastered song, speech, and the magic within. Right now, it's picked my cantrips, but I. It looks like I can pick them, just like in D and D. But vicious mockery, mockery is pretty standard. Blade ward. Okay. So bards are music. They're support. They're they can do a lot of different things. They use they use uh, they can give bardic inspiration to help others do cool things. They can heal. They can make monsters and whatnot like fall to the ground laughing, being incapacitated. Um, yeah, clerics are your general main healers.
they can also kind of aid people in their in their ability checks to like you know, think well or lift something heavy or break that door down or evade some traps for a minute. Um, yeah, a lot of healing. They also have like their main their main thing is guiding bolt as a damaging spell generally. It is decent damage, and it makes the next attack roll against that target, if it hits, um, if the Guiding Bolt hits, has, the next attack has advantage. So it's much more likely to hit. Like 25% more likely based on the statistics. Um, some cool... Yeah. Healers, support. Um, generally you'll see them with mail armor, maybe even plate armor, uh, shield, one-handed weapon, mace, something like that. Not really in much use for wand, but they, yeah. Druids can shape. Ooh, I think I know what I'm doing. I want to see my druid shape shift. That'd be cool. Hmm. But yeah, druids channel the elemental forces of nature and share deep kinship with animals. Mastery of wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. I'll read the cleric thing. Sorry, clerics are representative of the gods they worship, wielding potent divine magic for good or for ill. Um, druids, again, can shapeshift. Uh, if you want to choose this as, as one of your cantrips, you can do better damage with your staff or club by using your spellcasting attack, your spellcasting modifiers. It's called Shillelagh. Shillelagh? Shillelagh? However you want to pronounce it. And then Thorn Whip is kind of like this um, ranged option, 30 feet, but it, can, it will pull the creature 10 feet closer to you unless it's huge or, or bigger minimal damage, 1d6, but um, Ice Knife is pretty cool. It can do a little bit of a, an AoE. Thunder Wave I pretty much never use, but uh, Druids can cure. Cure Wounds is your touch spell. Healing Word is your range spell. Yeah. And yeah, Shape Shift. Shape Shift. Shape Shift. I don't know why I'm putting a D at the end of it. Fighters, pretty straightforward. Have the ma have mastered the art of combat, wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like a second skin. Uh, let's see. Uh, second wind allows them to heal themselves once per short rest. Um, I don't know if short rest or rest are a thing in this game. We'll find out how that works. Monk, channel your cosmic enlight enlightenment by uh, monks. Or sorry, fighters are basically good with any weapons, any armor, all the time. They want to be heavy for the most part. Unless you want to be a stealthy warrior, you can do that too. A fighter, sorry. Monks, channel your cosmic enlightenment by deftly dodging and efficiently dis dis disassembling your foes through stunning strikes and a whirlwind of martial art attacks. They sound cool, and they can be fun. So, they have what's called chi, and through the use of chi, your normal monk stuff is you hit with a staff, you hit with an unarmed attack, like as your main attack, or a club, or like a monk weapon, basically. Right now we got simple weapons and short swords. Um, and you can always do a bonus action unarmed strike that does, I think it's a 1d4. Because it's unarmed, a lot of classes don't get that 1d4, it'll just be a flat, like, your strength mod. Um... Which also means if it crits, technically, a monk's unarmed strike will actually get the bonus from the crit, but technically most classes won't. <laughs> um, but they can use chi for other things, like a an extra attack on that on that bonus attack. Um, they can do patient defense to like this is all kind of just based on knowledge um, to be able to be harder to hit by uh, by enemies for a turn. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. They can stun. If they hit, they can choose to do a stunning strike and have a chance to stun. Um, my... Hold on. Okay, cool. Just making sure it's still... Oh, fuck. I'm ten minutes longer than I thought I was. Paladin. Fueled by the oath you swore to uphold justice and righteousness, you are a beacon of hope in dark times. They're also a pretty heavily armored uh, class, generally. Um, they, they can heal, uh, they can use uh, Lay on Hands, which for some reason only has four healing, but it should have five per level, so that's weird. Um, Divine Sense, they can kind of... Oh, they gain attack... They get, in this game, they gain advantage on attack rolls against Celestials, Fiends, and Undead. Uh, you'll have Oaths. 
<laughs> um, you have the ability to heal, ability to add holy damage to your melee attacks. Like, even after you hit, you can declare it. Um... Oh, wow. Healing Radiance is a class... That's not a spell, though, right? Interesting. Um, okay. But, yeah. Uh, that's where a lot of... That's where a lot of damage comes for Paladins, the smiting. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers, honing a deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favorite prey. Oh, they, they don't have, um... I just noticed they don't have the A... Art artificers. Sad. Or, they might add them later, but they also might add the, um... What's the werewolf kind of... Blood hunters. There we go. But yeah. Rangers are good, you know, in, in the wilderness. Um, true strike is stupid. Unless you can use it, like, on an upcoming fight, when you know you're about to fight but haven't yet. You get advantage on your first attack. <laughs> Luckily, it's a cantrip. Rangers don't really have cantrips, actually. So this is interesting. And find familiar. They get a level one spell, even though they really don't in D and D. So, and they also they don't. I think they generally get find familiar as a class anyway. Whatever, rogue. With stealth skill and uncanny reflexes, rogues' versatility lets them get the upper hand in almost any situation. Sneak attack will do extra damage if we have advantage against that enemy. Or, in D&D, as long as another one of that enemy's enemies is nearby it. Like, within, uh, within melee range. And it'll do an extra 1d6 at level ones and levels 1 and 2. 2d6 at 3 and 4, etc, etc. All the way up to, I think, like 10d6 at level 19, 20. And, so, and that can be every turn on your turn, once per your turn, and also on reactions for um, opportunity attacks. Something that doesn't get used as much as it should. But they want to be stealthy, they're high in dexterity, leather armor, usually... Usually they have to use certain kinds of weapons that are um, flex, not flexible, that's not the right, finesse or or light. I think it's finesse or light. No, it's just finesse. It's like daggers, rapiers, short swords, I believe. Kind of limited in that in that section. That's kind of sad, but um, sorcerers. Natural spellcasters drawing on inherent magics from a gift or bloodline, so they're born with it. Or maybe they're given a gift somehow in not some other way. That's different from a warlock. Warlocks make packs, but um, sorcerers have what are called... God, I can't remember words right now. Um, sorcerer points, pretty obvious, that can enhance their spells. It can make a spell hit harder. It can make a spell more likely to hit. It can, get, it can enhance a spell's range. They can sculpt their spells to not hit their friends um, if they're AoE. They can increase like the likelihood of succeeding on um, like having the target fail on a saving throw. But, uh, yeah. Warlocks. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique, uh, unique magic. Warlocks have these Packed magics that can, in a lot of cases, if I don't know if this game has it, give them the ability to do like disguise self at will anytime, as many times as they want. That's what at will means. We'll see. Um, Eldritch Blast is their basic 1d10 force damage, 60 foot range. It's it can be upgraded by the, uh, the Eldritch the Eldritch pa packs. They usually they have way less spell slot, but they regain spell slots in a short rest. They're kind of like a mostly one-trick pony with Eldritch Blast, doing hopefully good damage if you take the right invocation. Oh, that's what it's called. Eldritch Invocations, my bad. Not packs. There are there are some other packs, though. P-A-C-T-S. Packs. And last but not least, Wizard. 
Uh, the master of the arcane by spell by specializing in the individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. They get their magic by studying, by copying the magical scrolls and and textbooks and books of other wizards, other spellcasters. They have to take the time to study to like put the the magic in their own words, in their own thoughts, in a way that they can cast it, and they write it in their book, and they take notes of it. Um, they have the highest selection of spells in the game, highest number of spell slots, I believe, also, but I don't know. I think well, so Sorcerer might actually be right there. I think Cleric and Sorcerer and Druid might, and Bard even, might all be right there. I can't remember right now. But... Yeah, lots of utility in a wizard. They have a lot of stuff to choose from. Um, there are some very fun spells out there. I don't think sleep was level one, but... Eh. Okay. Um, this video is long so far. I'm going to cut it off here and make it my choice. I'll see you soon.